Well, you know, if you solve, there's a $7,000 jackpot. Go ahead. Shaggy and Scooby-Doo. Whoa! <laughs> Crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> I have just one thing to say to you. Hi everyone. Welcome to the fourth video in the Math 21 review series. My name is Leonard. I am a member of UP Math Club and UP MMC, and I'll be here to help you review for your for your first um, law exam. Okay. So in this video, we'll be talking about the intermediate value theorem and the squeeze theorem. So okay, let's start. Let's recall some definitions muna. So let's start with IVT. So yung sinasabi ng IVT, uh, we let F be a continuous function and a closed interval AB with F of A not equal to F of B. So kapag nasatisfy daw yun, uh, then for every K between F of A and F of B, meron tayong C in between this open interval such that yung F of C natin will be equal to K. Alright. So at first, hindi siya ganong kadali ka... Hindi siya ganun kadali maintindihan at first. So let's try to draw a picture to get the intuition behind the IVT and bakit nga ba may ganun theorem and how are we sure na totoo siya. Okay. So kunwari we have a function. So kunwari we have f of a here and then f of b and d with a and B to be right here. Alright? So, sige. Kunwaki may ganito tayo. And let's try to draw a function. Nandito siya. Kunwaki ganito yung function. Alright. So, we can see na continuous naman siya on this closed interval, A, B. And then, F of A is obviously not equal to F of B. So, Ano nga ba yung sinasabi ng IVT? Since we have this one, we are assured na for whatever value in between f of a at saka f of b, kahit alin dito, um, between f of a and f of b, remember, ito yung mga y values natin, kahit alin dito, meron tayong matatapat na x value in between a and b such that equal nga yung function natin to that k na sinasabi dito. So for example, kung andito yung k natin, in between naman siya sa f of a and f of b. If you try to connect that sa function natin, makikita mo na mayroong x value na uh, will result to this value of k. And we are assured na in between siya ng a and b. Okay? So kahit anong k pa yan, basta in between f of a and f of b, laging mayroong, let's say k yan dito, laging mayroong x value na in between a and b na pwede natin ma, um, matapat dito. Okay? So, kahit saan yan, may kita natin, uh, it will satisfy. Alright? So, parang ganun nag-work yung IVT natin. So, next, uh, squeeze theorem naman or sandwich theorem. So, ito isa rin to sa mga uh, naging paborito ko ng Math 21 just because uh, para sa akin ang cool kung paano siya nag-work. So, sige. Let F, G, and H be functions that are defined on some open interval I uh, containing A except possibly at X equals A. So, medyo wordy yung first part. Pero ito yung crucial part dito. Kailangan, um, yung f of x, g of x, h of x, we can arrange them in order such that yung isa is, or rather yung isa sa kanila napapagitan sa other two. Okay? So, kailangan it satisfies for all x in some interval, except possibly at a. Alright? So, kapag ganun, yung sinasabi ng squeeze theorem, Kapag equal yung, yung limit ng f of x na to, and then ng h of x na to, we are assured, um, of course, kailan yung l natin, or yung limit nila, should be a real number, meaning they should be convergent. Then we are assured that the limit of this function na nakapagitan sa kanilang dalawa will also be equal to l. Alright? So again, let's try to draw a picture kung bakit nga ba totoo siya, or just to get a gist on how it works. So, siguro may drawing din naman sa, sa lecture nyo. Uh, nakita ko yan. There's a drawing there. So, just as another example. For example, ito yung f of x natin. So, less than the two functions. Let's say, ito siya. Kunwari lang. 
And then, yung isa pa, kunwari ito yung h of x. So, of course, kailangan yung h of x should be greater than both functions. So, kailangan nasa taas siya. Kunwari ganyan. Alright. So, just imagine na nagko-connect sila dito. And then, yung uh, g of x natin nasa pagitan. So, it doesn't matter ano yung itsura ng g of x. Basta continuous siya. Define on some open interval and then uh, kailangan nakapagitan lagi. So of course, since nakapagitan, uh, kailangan andito siya. Dadaan siya dapat dito. Okay? So kunwari ito yung point na kinoconsider natin. Let's say ito yung point A. Right? So since uh, both f of x and yung h of x, same yung limit nila at as x approaches A, kailangan sundin yun, din yun ng function nakapagitan sa kanila. Kasi remember, itong g of x, kailangan nasa in-between siya ng f of x and h of x. And kung yung limit nila pareho dito, parang ayun na, yun na yung part na nasa, nasa sandwich natin yung g of x in-between ng dalawang functions. So basically, we have no other choice than to take L to also be the limit of this function g of x. Kasi nakapagitan siya. Okay? So na-force natin kasi, ayun nga, naka-sandwich siya. So parang ganun yung um, intuition behind ng squeeze theorem. So, sana naging clear lang yan. Okay, so for this video, we only have one problem that we need to solve with two sub-items. So, consider this function here. So, may function tayo dito. And for letter A, we want to find, or we want to use the IVT to show that f of x has a root between 0 and 2. And then for letter B, we want to find the limit of this function as x approaches infinity. Okay? So remember in this part, of course, we'll be using IVT and the squeeze theorem. So hopefully, you have an idea kung paano tayo mag I'll give you, I'll give you time to think about this problem. You can pause the video and try it for yourself. And after none, we'll try to solve it together. Okay? So hopefully nag-try kayo. So sige, let's start with letter A. So we want to use IVT to show na may root yung f of x natin between 0 and 2. So paano nga ba? Um, since we want to use IVT, we want to make sure na nasatisfy muna yung conditions natin. So again, kailangan yung function natin continuous at the interval. Um, basically, dapat continuous siya from 0 to 2. So let's check. Um, we have here negative 4x plus 6 cosine pi x as a numerator. And we can say na continuous so for the reason na we have a polynomial here, which is usually continuous or always continuous if I'm not mistaken. And then may cosine function and tayo, which is also continuous. So together, they should be continuous. And then you see x plus 2, which is the denominator. We are sure na continuous siya kasi between 0 and 2 lang naman yung x values natin. Or in particular, uh, never siya making 0 between um, x equal to 0 and x equals 2. Okay? So, lagi namang positive yung value niya for uh, values of x that are greater than 0. Okay? So, yun. We are now able to conclude na continuous ng function natin on this interval 0, 2. Close interval. Okay? So, next, uh, let's evaluate naman f of 0 and f of 2 to make sure na hindi nga sila equal to each other. Alright? So if we try to evaluate substituting values, so this part will just be 0. This will just be 0. Ito 0 na lang. Here we'll have cosine 0, but that's just 1. So essentially, we'll just have cosine 0 to be 1. So we're now left with 6 over 2 or 3. So that will be f of 0. Next, f of 2 naman, substituting values a lot. We'll have negative 4 times 2 plus 6 cosine 2 pi, all over 3 times 2 plus 2. We'll have negative 8 plus 6 times, well, cosine of 2 pi is the same as cosine 0. Uh, yung value nila will both be 1. So we'll be left with negative 8 plus 6 all over 6 plus 2. And you can confirm na it's just equal to 1, negative 1 fourth. Okay? So, okay, we now notice na yung f of 2 is less than 0 and 0 is less than f of 0 kasi nga, negative 1 fourth is less than 0 
and 0 is less than 3. So remember, we have now satisfied all the conditions for the intermediate value theorem. So sinasabi ng IVT sa atin na dapat merong number, um, let's say some C between 0 and 2 na nag exist so that yung F of C natin will be equal to 0. Okay? So again, dito, we're just assured na merong number, but we don't really know kung ano yun. Um, but since gusto lang naman natin malaman kung meron nag exist this should be sufficient. Okay? So by IVT, we have now shown that there exists a number C between 0 and 2 such that yung function natin ay um, 0 sa C na yan. So that C will be the root of F of X. Okay? So next. Uh, so next part naman, we'll be using the squeeze theorem. So usually kapag squeeze theorem, ginagamit natin yung sine and cosine functions. Madalas yung lumalabas sa exam. So gaya dito. Um, one thing to take note is that the cosine of x will always be less than or equal to 1, less than or equal to negative 1. Kasi yan yung range niya. Similarly, ganun din for sine x. No? Kasi, well, practically yung cosine x and sine x, they're very similar. Uh, yung pinagkaiba lang nila. Well, they have the same range and the same form in some way. Pero parang shifted lang to the left yung isa sa kanila. So they're very similar. But ayan, key takeaway, yung range niya ay from negative 1 to 1. So we're assured na uh, in between lang din ng values na yun yung cosine pi x. So multiplying 6 to both sides will have this inequality. And then adding negative 4x to both sides. Now, preserve pa rin naman yung inequality. So we're assured na totoo pa rin to. And then we divide by 3x plus 2. So you might be asking, what if negative values yung 3x plus 2? Well, dito kasi, we already assume na positive yung 3x plus 2. For the reason na for um, x values that are greater than 0, positive naman siya. And later, we'll be taking the limit of x as x approaches infinity naman. So for positive values of x naman. So we can just take this inequality na lang. So parang uh, tinake na natin na positive dapat yung 3x plus 2. Which is true naman for um, x values that are greater than 0 in particular. Okay? So let's take the limit of both sides para ma-apply natin yung squeeze theorem. We can notice na yung limit ng negative 4x minus 6 all over 3x plus 2. Kapag, mag, uh, kapag kukunin natin yung limit, ito will just multiply Basically, multiply tayo ng 1 over x all over 1 over x dito. So that mawala yung x term dito. Okay? So may kita nyo naman. Alright. So ayan na. Uh, Dinivide natin by x yung numerator and denominator. So we'll have this expression here. So that when we uh, take the limit of this function as x approaches infinity, uh, this will just be 0. This will also be 0. And we'll be, we will just be left with um, negative 4 thirds. Yun yung limit ng function dito. Alright, so for the other function, parang ganun pa yung mangyayari. If we take the limit, we'll have this one. Divide both the numerator and denominator by x. And you will find na negative 4 thirds pa rin yung limit ng function natin. Okay? So we have shown, uh, balikan natin. Sige, kahit ito na lang. We have shown na yung limit nito, the limit of this one is negative 4 thirds. The limit of this one, limit of this one is negative four thirds. So by the squeeze theorem, since we satisfy natin lahat ng conditions, we are forced to conclude na our original function, which is in between these two, should also have the limit, should also have a limit of negative four thirds as x approaches infinity. Okay? So basically, ginamit na natin yung squeeze theorem para mahanap yung limit ng function natin. So this is very convenient kasi we're taking the limit of functions na mas madaling kunin yung limit instead na ito. Kasi kapag kunin natin yung limit ito as x approaches infinity, mahirap siya. So we need to use a new method to find the limit. And in this case, yung squeeze theorem na yung ginamit natin. Okay? So ayan lang. We're able to find the limit of the function and we're able to solve the problem na kanina, both A and B. So that concludes this video. So hopefully may natutunan kayo and I'll see you in the next video kung nandun pa man ako. Abangan nyo na lang. Alright? Good luck!